A Hindu wedding is vivaha Sanskrit, vivaha and the wedding ceremony is called viva sanskar in North India and kalyanam generally in South India. Hindus attach a great deal of importance to marriage. The wedding ceremonies are very colourful, and celebrations may extend for several days. The bride's and groom's home—entrance, doors, wall, floor, roof, are sometimes decorated with colors, balloons, and other decorations. The rituals and process in a Hindu wedding vary widely. Nevertheless, the Hindu wedding ceremony at its core is essentially a Vedic yajna ritual, and three key rituals are almost universal Kanyadan, Panagrahana, and Saptapadi which are respectively, giving away of his daughter by the father, voluntarily holding hands near the fire to signify union, and taking seven steps before fire. Each step is a complete circuit of the fire. At each step promises are made by in the long form see below each to the other the primary witness of a hindu marriage is the fire deity or the sacred fire agni in the presence of family and friends the ceremony is traditionally conducted entirely or at least partially in sanskrit considered by hindus as the language of holy ceremonies the local language of the bride and groom may also be used the rituals are prescribed in the Griya Sutra composed by various rishis such as Bhadayana and Ashvalayana. The pre-wedding and post-wedding rituals and celebrations vary by region, preference and the resources of the groom, bride and their families. They can range from one day to multi-day events. Pre-wedding ceremonies include engagement, which involves vagdana betrothal and lagna patra written declaration, and the arrival of the groom's party at the bride's residence, often as a formal procession with dancing and music. The post-wedding ceremonies may include abhishek, anna prashashan, ashurvada, and grihapravesa, the welcoming of the bride to her new home. The wedding marks the start of the grihastha householder stage of life for the new couple. In India, by law and tradition, no Hindu marriage is binding or complete unless the ritual of seven steps and vows in presence of fire is completed by the bride and the groom together. This requirement is under debate, given that several Hindu communities such as the Nayars of Kerala or Bunts of Tulu Nadu do not observe these rites. Eight forms of marriage Ancient Hindu literature, in for example the Asvalayana Griya Sutra and Atharvaveda, identifies eight forms of marriage. They are traditionally presented, as here, in order of religious appropriateness prashasta. they also differ very widely in social acceptability. Legal aspects are regulated mainly by the Hindu Marriage Act, 1955. Brahma marriage, considered the religiously most appropriate marriage, and the most prevalent among Hindus in modern India. The father finds an educated man and proposes the marriage of his daughter to him. The groom, bride and families freely concur with the proposal. The two families and relatives meet, the daughter is ceremonially decorated, the father gives away his daughter in betrothal, and a Vedic marriage ceremony is conducted. Deva marriage, the father gives away his daughter along with ornaments to a priest as a sacrificial fee. This form of marriage occurred in ancient times when yajna sacrifices were prevalent. Arsha marriage – The groom gives a cow and a bull to the father of the bride and the father exchanges his daughter in marriage. The groom takes a vow to fulfill his obligations to the bride and family life Prajapatiya marriage – A couple agree to be married by exchanging some Sanskrit mantras vows to each other. This form of marriage is akin to a civil ceremony. The above four forms of marriage were considered socially proper and religiously appropriate prashasta under Hinduism since the rituals include vows from Vedic scriptures. Both bride and groom commit to each other and share responsibilities to their families. The remaining four do not include vows and were considered aprashasta inappropriate among these two were socially acceptable. Gandhar va marriage, the couple simply live together out of love, by mutual consent, consensually consummating their relationship. The marriage is entered into without religious ceremonies, and is akin to the Western concept of common law marriage. The Kama Sutra, and, in the Mahabharata, Rishi Kanva, the foster father of Shakuntala, claim that this form of marriage is ideal. Asura marriage, the groom offers a dowry to the father of the bride and to the bride, both accept the dowry out of free will, and he receives the bride in exchange. This is akin to marrying off a daughter for money, and is considered inappropriate by Hindu Smriti writers because greed, not what is best for the woman, can corrupt the selection process. The last two forms of marriage were not only inappropriate, but religiously forbidden. 
Rikshasa marriage, where the groom forcibly abducts the bride against her will and her family's will, the word Rikshasa means devil. Peshacha marriage, where the man forces himself on a woman when she is insentient, when she is drugged or drunken or unconscious. James Lochtefeld comments that these last two forms were forbidden but the marriages themselves were still recognized in ancient Hindu societies, not to allow these acts but rather to provide the woman and any resulting children with legal protection in the society. <laughs> Key rituals There is no single standard Hindu marriage ceremony. Regional variation is prevalent in the sequence of rituals comprising the ceremony. There is also considerable flexibility within each ritual. Variation reflects family traditions, local traditions, resources of the families and other factors. Three key rituals predominate, as follows. Two are yajna. Kanyadan, the giving away of his daughter by the father. Panagrahana, a ritual in presence of fire, where the groom takes the bride's hand as a sign of their union. Saptapadi, the crucial ritual. The term means seven steps, with each step corresponding in the long form to a pair of vows, groom to bride, and bride to groom. The vows are pronounced in Sanskrit, sometimes also in the language of the couple. For the short form see below, like Panagrahana, Saptapati is performed in presence of fire, and in many weddings, after each of their seven oaths to each other, the groom and bride perform the ritual of Agnapradakshinam, walking around the fire, with hands linked or with the ends of their garments tied together. The groom usually leads the bride in the walk. Fire is the divine witness to the marriage, and after Saptapati the couple are considered husband and wife. Kanyadan. The Kanyadan ceremony is performed by the bride's father. If the father has died, a guardian of the bride's choosing performs the ritual. The father brings the daughter, then takes the bride's hand and places it in the groom's. This marks the beginning of the ceremony of giving away the bride. The groom accepts the bride's hand, while the Kama Sukta him to love is pronounced, in the presence of the father, the bride and the groom. The Kama Sukta verse is, after this ritual recital, the father asks the groom to not fail the bride in his pursuit of dharma moral and lawful life, artha wealth and kama love. The groom promises to the bride's father that he shall never fail her in his pursuit of dharma, artha and kama. The groom repeats the promise three times. This repeated promise by the groom marks the end of the kanyadan ritual in the Hindu wedding. Panagrahana. The ritual of Panagrahana comes after Kanyadan. It is sometimes preceded by the Vivaha Homa rite, wherein a symbolic fire is lit by the groom to mark the start of a new household. Panagrahana is the holding the hand ritual as a symbol of the bride and groom's impending marital union, with the groom acknowledging responsibility to four deities: Bhaga signifying wealth, Aryama signifying heavens, Milky Way, Savita signifying radiance, new beginning, and Parandi signifying wisdom. The groom faces west, and while the bride sits in front of him, with her face to the east, he holds her hand while the following Rig Vedic mantra is recited. In the Gujarati wedding this step is called hast mylap literally, meeting of hands. The whole ceremony was timed around an auspicious time for this step and a few decades ago the wedding invitation would even list the time when this event was going to take place. Saptapati, short form The Saptapati Sanskrit seven steps, seven feet, sometimes called Satfir, seven rounds is the most important ritual of Vedic Hindu weddings, and represents the legal element of the Hindu marriage ceremony. The couple conduct seven circuits of the holy fire Agni, which is considered a witness to the vows they make to each other. In some regions, a piece of clothing or sashes worn by the bride and groom are tied together for this ritual. Elsewhere, the groom holds the bride's right hand in his own right hand. Each circuit of the consecrated fire is led by either the bride or the groom, varying by community and region. Usually, the bride leads the groom in the first circuit. In North India, the first six circuits are led by the bride, and the final one by the groom. In Central India and Suriname, the bride leads the first three or four circuits. With each circuit, the couple makes a specific vow to establish some aspect of a happy relationship and household for each other. In some South Indian weddings, after each saying a mantra at each of the seven steps, the couple say these words together. Now let us make a vow together. 
We shall share love, share the same food, share our strengths, share the same tastes. We shall be of one mind, we shall observe the vows together. I shall be the Samaveda, you the Rigveda, I shall be the upper world, you the earth, I shall be the Sukilam, you the holder, together we shall live and beget children, and other riches, come thou, O beautiful maiden." In North Indian weddings, the bride and the groom say the following words after completing the seven steps We have taken the seven steps. You have become mine forever. Yes, we have become partners. I have become yours. Hereafter, I cannot live without you. Do not live without me. Let us share the joys. We are word and meaning, united. You are thought and I am sound. May the night be honey sweet for us. May the morning be honey sweet for us. May the earth be honey sweet for us. May the heavens be honey sweet for us. May the plants be honey sweet for us. May the sun be all honey for us. May the cows yield us honey sweet milk. As the heavens are stable, as the earth is stable, as the mountains are stable, as the whole universe is stable, so may our union be permanently settled. Saptapati, long form The long form of Saptapati starts with a preface announced by the priest, introducing a series of vows the groom and bride make to each other, as follows. With the completion of the seventh step the two become husband and wife. Topic. Additional rituals Many Hindu weddings start with the milne meeting and swagatam welcome ceremony. This ritual is where the Bharat groom's procession party arrives at the bride's home or the location where the bride is and marriage will be celebrated. The Bharat typically includes dancing and joyous members of groom's family, relatives and friends. On their arrival, there is a ritual where key persons from the groom's side and bride's side are introduced to each other. The introduction is typically followed by jay mala garland exchange between bride and groom and a reception that serves food and drinks. Many other rituals and ceremonies are sometimes found in Hindu weddings, such as Mataparka, Viva Homa, Agni Parinayana, Asmarahana, Laha Homa, Abhishek, Anna Prashashan, and Ashur Vada. All these ceremonies are carried out at the wedding location, typically at or near the bride's home. These additional rituals include the participation of the brothers, sisters, maternal, paternal relatives, guardians, or friends of the bride. In some parts of India, such as Gujarat and northern India, a Laha Homa ritual called Mongol Farah is performed where the couple make four circles around holy fire. It follows Asta Milap meeting of hands of the couple, but precedes Saptapati. The first three circles is led by the groom, and it represents three of four goals of life considered important in Hindu life, dharma, artha, kama. The fourth circle is led by bride and it represents the fourth goal of life, moksha. After saptapati, as hymns are being recited, the groom performs mang sindor ritual where a saffron or red color powder is marked into the parting of the wife's hair. Instead of circling the fire and other steps, the rituals and ceremonies may be performed symbolically, such as stepping on small heaps of rice or throwing grains into the fire. Some rituals involve rice or other grains, seeds, and pastes. In these ceremonies, rice is thrown at the bride, groom, or they kick a container containing the grain. Rituals include darshan, where the newly married couple are met, blessed and greeted by family and friends of the bride and groom. After the Hindu wedding is complete, the bride leaves for groom's home via groom's car. In groom's car, bride and groom sit together, and groom's younger brother drive the car. Bride's two sister also come with groom's family. When they arrive to groom house where Hindu family members of the groom welcome the newly wedded couple in a ritual known as grihapravesa homecoming, entry. This ceremony typically requires participation of the mother, father, brothers, and sisters, or other guardians of the groom. Ancient literature suggests the Hindu couple spent time with each other, but delayed the consummation for at least three nights following the wedding. Some scholars have proposed the observance of this rite in the past, known as Chattarthakarma the rite performed on the fourth day of marriage. Chattarthakarma is followed by most of South Indian communities as a possible basis for the validity of a marriage. Other scholars suggest saptapati and regionally customary wedding rituals, not consummation, defines legal validity of a Hindu marriage. The Hindu Marriage Act of 1955, Article 7, is consistent with the latter. Chattarthakarma is not a common practice in Hindu communities. In modern Hindu families, the couple proceed to honeymoon after Grihapravesa. 
Topic: Rituals in Nepal. In the Hindu culture of Nepal, marriage rituals are done by the Chetri in a 16-step process that centers on the household. The household is important during the marriage ritual because it is the center of the concept of mandala. The Chetri's homes are considered to be domestic mandalas and so have roles as householders. The act of marriage brings men and women into the householder role. Marriage is the most important rite of passage for the Chetris and is one of the most serious. Women move from their houses to the home of the groom after marriage. The ceremony is done in a precise and careful manner as to not bring bad luck to the families of the bride and groom. Certain traditions, for example, no one seeing the face of the bride until the end, are followed in order to ensure future prosperity. Prior to the marriage ceremony, there is no kinship between families of the bride and groom and the bride must be a virgin. The marriage ceremony consists of a series of rites that are performed over a two-day period between the houses of the bride and the groom. Within each home the enclosed area in the courtyard and the kitchen are used the most, the jagya and the kitchen are considered the most important parts of the domestic mandala structure because it is where rice an important part of the Chetri's culture is prepared and consumed. At the end of the ceremony is the establishment of the role of the wife and husband in the husband's home. The first step in the marriage ceremony is called prabhanga. In the kitchen of their homes, the bride and the groom worship the seven mother goddesses as so to pay respect to their ancestors and ask for peace. In the second, third, and fourth step, the groom is then blessed by his mother and is taken outside to his jagya where his father and procession carry him and bring gifts for the bride to her house in a ceremony called dulaha anman. In the fifth step as the groom waits before the house of the bride, gifts of clothes and food are placed around the jagya, the father of the bride then places red paste on the groom's forehead indicating that he is no longer an outsider to his family. The sixth step is the performance of the barana or welcoming for the groom and his janti as they enter the jagya. The father purifies the body of the groom using panchamri nectar from five pure liquids. A small feast is then held for the groom as the next steps in the marriage continue. After the small feast, the marriage process for the bride begins. The seventh step takes place in the kitchen of the bride where the process of Kanya Dan starts. The bride's parents give their daughter in marriage to her groom, thereby allowing the bride to be a part of the groom's lineage and making the father's lineage secondary. After they wash their feet, they dress in red and, in the eighth step, sit beside in each other in the jagya. They perform post-marriage rites as they make sacrificial offerings to the fire in the center of the jagya. During these rites the bride and groom perform tasks such as placing red powder in the hair of the bride and the bride eats leftover food of the groom and at the end the now husband gives his wife a personal name for which she is to be called by, after the post-marriage ceremony, the married couple being to leave the bride's home. In the ninth step, the husband and wife return to the kitchen of the wife and worship their ancestors and the seven mother goddesses. In the 10th, 11th, and 12th step, the couple leave the wife's house as she is given a garland from her parents, the wife and husband enter the jagya and are then escorted out riding on palanquins as they return to their permanent home of the husband. The 13th step beings once they enter the jagya of the groom and his virgin sisters welcome the wife in a ceremony called Ardi Sail. They unveil the bride and adorn her with flower garlands and sprinkle puffed rice on her a sign of prosperity. The fourteenth step is completed once the bride promises gifts to the sisters, she then moves on the fifteenth step where she steps on piles of rice in a path toward the kitchen. The final step is a series of rites, the first of which is the bride worshipping the ancestors and deities of the husband, she then demonstrates her skills in handling rice to the husband's mother and sisters and then they entwine her hair. Finally, the mother unveils the bride again in front of the husband and in a ceremony called Kuta Dhog, the bride places the foot of the mother on her forehead thereby ending the marriage ceremony. Topic wedding and married life in Hinduism While there are many rituals in Hinduism, such as those at birth and deaths of loved ones, the Hindu wedding is the most important and extensive personal ritual an adult Hindu undertakes in his or her life. Typical Hindu families spend significant effort and financial resources to prepare and celebrate weddings. Topic economics In 2008, Indian weddings market was estimated to be $31 billion a year. Various sources estimate India celebrates about 10 million weddings per year, and over 80% of these are Hindu weddings. The average expenditures exceed $3,000 per wedding. Another $30 billion per year is spent on jewellery in India, with jewellery for weddings being the predominant market. 
In a nation with per capita annual income of $1,500, weddings are a major financial burden for the typical Hindu family. Topic law in India, where most Hindus live, the laws relating to marriage differ by religion. According to the Hindu Marriage Act of 1955, passed by the Parliament of India, for all legal purposes, all Hindus of any caste, creed or sect, Sikh, Buddhists and Jains are deemed Hindus and can intermarry. By the Special Marriage Act, 1954, a Hindu can marry a person who is not Hindu, employing any ceremony, provided specified legal conditions are fulfilled. By Section 7 of Hindu Marriage Act, and tradition, no Hindu marriage is binding and complete before the seventh step of the Saptapati ritual, in presence of fire, by the bride and the groom together. In some cases, such as South Indian Hindu marriages, this is not required. Topic married life A Vedic sage emphasized that the basis of happy and fulfilling married life is the sense of unity, intimacy and love between husband and wife both physically, mentally and spiritually. Hence wife is considered to be the ardhangani of husband as per Hindu tradition. Marriage is not for self-indulgence, but is considered a lifelong social and spiritual responsibility. Married life is considered an opportunity for two people to grow as life partners into soul mates. Topic see also Viva, marriage per Hindu Vedic traditions Mangala Sutra Padavrata marriage in Hinduism Marriages in India Topic References Topic Further reading Vivaha Sanskara, The Hindu Wedding Ceremony, OCLC 772457120 and ISBN 0-9793501-3-1 and OpenLibrary OL 16793722 W. Kavita Kapoor 2007, Rituals and Customs of a Hindu Wedding, Design and Planning Guide, OCLC 225099749, ISBN 978-1434319272 Michaels, A. Hinduism, Past and Present 5th ed., Princeton University Press Oracle, pp. 111–131, ISBN 0-691-08953-1.